Facebook, myself and my really good friend Tim Watson here. How are you mate? doing, Carl? Oh, I can't give you one, I'm not with glasses. Oh, we'll do that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah mate. Um, Hi, everyone. So, it's the culmination of Welsh Wine Week, um, and we're tasting a range of fantastic uh, Welsh sparkling wines. Tim is dying to get to these because while I've tasted most of them, uh, you haven't. No. Uh, four, I haven't. Two, I have. Um, and they, you know, it's been really hard because we've been in the fridge all week. Yeah. Um, we 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 had both of yours, and Ant sold the one that you brought for this tasting on Saturday. But thank gosh you have a couple of bottles left. And you've sold out of all our wines. We sold this out week, of all you? your wines this week, Friday and Saturday. That's every the, single and bottle. That is the effective Welsh Wine Week. That's why. It's, it's, yeah, it's been a great week. I've, I've followed through. You've been busy. Yeah, I've been. I'm, I'm almost from a from a. Social media, I'm Welsh wine wheat out. <laughs> well, listen, we're going out with a bang. We are indeed. So, um, well, first of all, we've, we've got to tell you there's a competition. So, um, what we're going to do here, ask questions. Yeah. Charlotte's on a, a laptop over there, and she'll just sort of give us little pointers. And we're hoping the two wine producers may actually be here watching us, and we may well be asking you the other question as well. So, uh, do let Charlotte know if you if you're on, uh, and we'll, we'll get on with it. But first, go you, on. Can, you can shout the questions over for us, can't you, Charlotte? Yes. So, and any question, as, as, as diverse and as Frank catches out, I'll probably ask Siri, she's here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, it's, been ex, it's been an exciting week, and what, what a way to go out, Colin. Um, oh, mate, this is, you're, gonna, you're just going to be treated to... Yeah. The, the thing, we were just, you asked me earlier on about what about, what about experiences. I am actually quite emotional about the whole thing, because... The diversity of Welsh wine we talk about, but what I've seen in this week is the diversity of the vineyards and the way they've gone about it. Yeah. I've absolutely loved the way that vineyards have open, opened up the vineyards, opened up the hearts. You know, I've seen uh, Wine Time London do uh, Rob at White Castle, Woody Montgomery, Clannock. I've seen the likes of, of Ryan at Clannock open up his place with a fantastic tasting. The tastings have been great, mm. and they've been great because they've been interesting. They're not the stuck-up stuff. It's been people talking about the vineyards, the people, and the diversity yeah. of the vineyards comes out in the wine. Yeah, too. yeah. they've opened their hearts, and do you know what? There's nothing better than we're so fortunate to be able to sit down and to try so many in a sitting like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the one great thing about wine tasting is, is that you know you'll, you'll see real gear changes through them. Yeah. Not only just by looking at the colour. I mean, you self-poured them today in advance. I did, and I did that for a reason. I was going to open them up, and yesterday, Rich and Joy from Anchor Hill did a wonderful uh, Facebook Live, and they just reminisced over their life of, of having Anchor Hill. And at the end, Rich had celebrated with a really class bottle of Anchor Hill sparkling wine. And he, and he let the top off, and it went off like a volcano. And, he, and a, for the professionals, he got his thumb and it quick, and it went right, and thought, I'm not doing well, that do today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've got them ready in the glass, which yeah. is, I think, is a good call. Yeah. Um, but look, let's start, and um, we just talked about Anger Hill, so let's go for it. Our first wine tonight, uh, this afternoon, tonight, is Anger Hill um, Blanc de Noir. Now, Tim, tell me what Blanc de Noir means. Well, Blanc de Noir uh, is 100% Pinot Noir, so they'll use three grapes in the blend of Champagne, and it attributes itself to that, but splits the varietals down. Blanc de Noir is 100% Pinot. Blanc de Blanc is 100% Chardonnay, um, and then you've got um, Pinot Meunier. Yeah, Pinot Meunier, which there are. I have had some similar, like single varietals um, in France, but just focusing on Pinot Noir and Chardonnay here, it would be labelled Blanc de Noir or Blanc de Blanc, and um, both and both very different. Yeah, and then on the back it says zero dosage. Zero dosage. Quick one, it's a bit complex that. But yeah. Come on. So the, all the all these are traditional methods. So they're fermented in the bottle as opposed to charmat method, done in tank and then bottled. And dosage attributes to when they freeze the neck of the bottle. If I hold something up, it's not champagne, but you're tilting the bottle down here and they're turning the bottle to get the dead yeast down into the neck, and then they will freeze the neck so it catches the waste, the deposit. Uh, from the yeast, and then when they when they disgorge the wine, it will shoot that yeast out. The dosage, because of that loss, the low fill, which is why these little foil necks were first invented to hide a low fill, and they're now there aesthetically just to sort of dress the bottle. Dosage is topping it up with uh, a liquor of the same base wine, 
but it'll have a little bit of residual sugar to it. But this is zero dosage, there's no sugar to so it. So the sugar added at that point can be brut or then could be demi set depending yeah. on the sugar they're going to add. But in this like case, none. Non sugar. Zero. Well, let's see how it fares. I'm expecting because it is brute and it is traditional method, with traditional method as well. Incredibly fine bubbles, yeah, nice incredibly bubbles. fine. Whoa, that is, uh, that's got... Quite flinty. Yeah, it is. I, I just wonder if Richard, Richard, if you are watching a joy, and... Uh, hi, a joy. Joy. hi, Joy. Hi, Joy. Joy's here, great. Hey, Joy. Um, joy, can you tell me how long you um, actually keep this wine on its leaves and I believe some of the vintages you keep on maybe for three five years but if you can come back and tell me that would be great but anyway let's oh, it's, very, it's very bright look it's very clean yeah it's got a really nice persistent bubble to it yeah very very fine so we're going to expect them to breaking down how to do a systematic approach to tasting there's appearance then you've got the nose and then you've got the mouth the mouth we're going to see a mousse um, and a persistence with the with the fizz and traditional method and brutes always accentuates a dryness in the wine with fizz, um, as opposed to a still base wine. We've but got a, we've got that classic brioche biscuity nose. Wow, I was not expecting this. It's almost a that that just shouts Menai oysters to me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's almost a salinity in there. Yeah, salinity is a great way to attribute it, and then immediately you'd go in for. Maybe pairing that with um, mussels, poached yeah. seafoods, because it's quite delicate. Yeah. But without having that, um, the addition of the sugar, it, it does appear very, very dry. But the mousse is lovely. I, I'm sort of surprised because I, was, you know, I'm a big lover. This this huge barrel here is from Champagne Rene Jolie, yeah. Yeah. which is down the very south of uh, of um, yeah, the Champagne, Champagne area, yeah. and it's very predominantly Pin uh, Blanc de Noir, yeah. Pinot Noir, and you get much more fuller wines. Yeah. This is very refined. Yeah, very mm -hmm. refined. And then, you know, soil and topography of soil would be slightly George different. says three to four years. Mm. Oh, so three to four years, <coughs> and this is Anger Hill's um, uh, non-vintage. I'm, I'm pretty sure Joe it's non-vintage, isn't it? Yeah. She'll let us know if, it, if I've got it wrong, but I can't see it. It says non-vintage on the front, there is an okay. MV, and right. then disgorged on uh, January, February, March 19th. So quickly before we move on, Anger Hill, mm. uh, biggest vineyard in Wales, winner of Boacina del Mondo, I think 2012-13, yeah. that is the biggest sparkling wine competition in the world. Yeah. Can you imagine if you're Bollinger or Perry Jouet or whoever going, who are oh, these guys? Uh, paid the guy, <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing coming here? But they, they really, so that one, that, that vineyard was pronounced the best sparkling one in the world it's it's exactly right. competition. yeah it's great it's great everything about it the presentation and yeah. can i tell, just highlight a little bit the first time i had some anchor hill sparkling uh, i was with my wife down in brown's pub uh, where the the great dylan thomas used to go really and um they had an amazing little setup with pendari in there on the back bar and anchor hill and we had, we had things to celebrate, Nicole and I had not long been together, and we, we celebrated with Welsh sparkling. Oh, yeah. fantastic. The way to do it. Okay, we've got to move on. Uh, 2013 and 2014, and what, Charlotte? The vintages. Oh, the vintages. vintages. Oh, Great. that's really good. Great. Joy, thank you very much. Yeah, lovely. Um, stay in line, because we've got competition, and um, you can't enter it, because I know you'll know the answer. Anyway, <laughs> competition. So, first up, so... Basically, guys, we've got three bottles of wine to to uh, give away today. Solaris, our lovely Rondo Red, and our beautiful Regent Rosé. Uh, and we're going to do three questions. Question number one coming out. What was the first commercial vineyard? Where was it and when? So, where was the first commercial vineyard in Wales? It's a long time ago, and roughly when? Oh, hi, Charlie and Jack are watching too. Oh, great. Hey. So, Charlie and Jack, uh, we'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> we'll apply for the vineyard here uh, with two, with two um, oh, we've got questions, mate. He's got loads of questions because he's never tasted that before. It's no. blown him away. Anyhow, next vineyard. Um, so, you've got the competition. What was the first commercial vineyard in Wales and where was it and when? Hey, uh, Siri. <laughs> yeah. This is lovely. That's a great you start. Can't win you can't win one. You sell it. You sell it all out. Next wine, Tim. Tell us about the next one. So, Tinta Parva. Um, 
Dachlia, meaning uh, I don't know if Judith is with us today, but celebration, celebration. I believe in Welsh. That's yes. what a celebration it's going to be. Yes. Um, again, traditional method. Um, I don't think there was a vintage on this one, was there? Can't no, I think no vintage. And I think there's quite a mix of grapes in this, if I remember. This right. won best sparkling wine in Wales at the Wine GB Championships in 2016, I believe. Okay. And they've got a beautiful slate plaque to commemorate it. I was very envious. Um, but it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful wine. It's um, uh, Colin and Judith Dudley down there, looking down onto the Wine Valley. Tintin's got the Abbey uh, in Tintin, and um, uh, I love it. It's four, it's about three to four acres, four thousand vines. It's steep like this, and Judith, well, she she prunes all them on her own, and that, that, that's some feat because it's a. It's hard work, Hot. It's hard work when it's like that as well, mate. Yeah, it really is. Anyway, come on, let's do it. I'm really looking forward to this. Again, nice colour. It's bright. Yeah. It's yeah. clean. Very, very clean. There's a nice petillance coming through, a nice beading. Salut, yachida. Yachida, mate. A little bit more going on with the nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It appears a little bit sweeter, um, but that's comparing it against what you just had with Anchor Hill. Not overly, but it just feels a little bit more fruitier. Yeah, so. more fruitier, very balanced. Yeah, we've come from this wow. very precious wine. Oh, darling, this is, this is uh, a bit richer. Yeah, definitely. A little more rounded. It appears a little bit more apple as well for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a, a touch of almost pink grapefruit. Lovely, wine, yeah. Lo 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 bits. Lovely mouthfeel. It's balanced. Yeah. What I'm smelling is what I'm tasting. The mousse is lovely. I think that sweetness coats the mouth a bit more, so it's mm. lasting a little bit longer. But I'm just getting loads, little glints of baked apple, tiny bits yeah, of brioche, yeah. but really, really mellow. We, we're, we're producing awesome mm. stuff. Who needs champagne? Who needs champagne? And when you got two wines that are distinctly different, yeah, not very, traditional very, method. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know that will have some age to it. It doesn't have it on, but I know it will. Um, because Tins Parva do not release the wines in the horror. Yeah, no. you, you, can, you can feel a little bit of age to it because it's toastier. Yeah. It's got a little bit more going on, but very well refined, very well balanced. The mouth feels, I mean, the flavour goes a bit longer because of that little bit of sweetness to it. Yes. But it is yes. brute, it is dry. Yep. Um, again, like food matching wise, I'd be quite happy to have that alone, but again, seafood, but something with a, a bit more richer, pungent flavour. Yeah, I could. I, I'm got, I mean, you know me and fish. I mean, I'm Delva Soul in that every day of the oh, week. Yeah. You know. Grilled over so um, a nice sea bass. Speak up a little bit, Charlotte says. Um, did you have a note you're trying to give me there of something? The winner. We well, have a winner. We have a winner. Shall I announce it? Yeah. Are we ready? So da, 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 we have a winner for the first question. Oh, hey. And who is the winner? It is Anharad May, uh, 1875. Uh, is the answer. And you have won the Solaris. We have a place though. Uh, it is yes. Far away. Castle Koch. Castle Castle Koch. Koch, sorry. I live not that far away from there, just uh, outside Whitchurch in Cardiff, a beautiful, beautiful setup. Um I've never I've never ever tried it. No. Oh well it um it's it, funny. There was uh, it, it 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 ended before the First World War. Right, okay. Because they run out of sugar. Oh, yeah. Uh they needed sugar because of a shortage for the yeah, First World yeah. War. Yeah. They were shack chattelizing. Uh, various views. The view was generally tasting like still champagne. Wow. Uh -huh. Like this tomorrow morning, if we left it in the They place. set the ball rolling um, for yeah, where we are today. Some were not as complimentary. There was a comment of one one lord preferred, preferring his hock to cock. <laughs> <laughs> Cast their hock. Cast their hock. <laughs> um, but there we are, I think. Well yeah, done. Well done, man. Congratulations. And uh, you've got a bottle of Solaris. Uh, well, uh, you can have anything you want to this love, but you know. We think it's all the way to you. Shall we get the details? 1875. Well done. Well, well done. done. So, and actually, it wasn't the, just the old, 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 the first commercial vineyard in Wales. It was the first commercial vineyard in the whole of the UK. Wow. So wow. Wales did it first, mate. What an accolade. Wales did it first. We're still going. We're still going. Okay. So, um, I think, great. Um, and now, what a gear change. Prepare. Prepare, because this is going to blow your mind. I can't wait. I've never had a Ryan before. You've already talked about it so much, haven't you? Yeah. 
Um, well, when we first when you first showed it me a couple of weeks ago, that's the one I really wanted to take home straight away. Yeah. And you got in your car and went. And I was, like, and I was so waxing lyrical. Yeah, unbelievable. When you said to me, "Wait until you smell black currant leaf," and I was like, "Yeah, right." Yeah. And then, wow. So a little bit about the vineyard, um, the Evans family. Um, so you've got Richard and Sue in uh, Aberero, beautiful place, a little bit inward, uh, constantly planting. Jack, you're there. How many acres have you got now? And I believe he does serve you a planting yet. So, so we've got, um, uh, yeah, father, uh, uh, mum and dad, um, Richard and Sue, and then son, Jack, uh, and his lovely partner, uh, Charlie. So we're going to have a go at this now. When, when Charlotte put Charlie and Jack up, I was like, I thought it was my Charlie and Jack. <laughs> oh, yeah, my two young boys watching their daddy live on television. <laughs> Great. I can't wait for this. I really can't wait. Come on, really, let's do it. Let's do it, mate. Look at the yeah. colour. Look at the colour. It's, it's almost a green tinge to this. Yeah, very, very much so. Very much so. The beading is just great. I'd yeah. say the temperature of these now, because they've been really yeah. super chilled at five five degrees. We've had them out a good 20 minutes. They're just coming alive now, I think. So you're gonna, this is gonna hit you like a I need to sit down for this one. Yeah, <laughs> well, this, this, is, um, this, wow. is, this is, I mean, it's just full on. It, it, and can I tell you, I tasted this when it was a lot younger and it really was powerful. Now the age has toned this down, it down. but yeah. you've still got this I, I unmistakably black relief. Uh, black currant, black leaf, currant leaf. sorry. Yeah, um, flat crunch, which is really odd, but just fabulous. I smell, I smell some Sauvignon Blancs very similar. Yeah, to that. yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, really, really top end Sauvignons, and, and black currant leaf is a really good high note away from gooseberry. Yeah. Um, this leaps out of the glass. I can actually smell it from here. And one, one thing we can see about pungency as well is, you know, sometimes if it's light and delicate, you've really got to get your nose into the glass. Yeah. When it's there and in abundance, you know the mouth so thing is going to cover the Oh, same. I've pulled you a proper big loss. I know. Well, that. yeah. I, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, you got. You really, really want to get your, your liquid all around your mouth. It's actually less strong on the on the palate than it was on the nose. Yeah, there's a balance in there. Yeah, but there's little toasty notes to it as well. Yeah. And I think the balance of the fruit and the depth and complexity because of aging, they really complement each other. Yeah. I mean, I would like to have seen it straight away fresh just to see how fruitful it is. But like you say, it's it's tempered. Uh, that that is outstanding. I just you know you go um, you go into France and you go in those mm. uh, the bakery you know that and you see those beautiful little. Murti, I think the Winbury tarts that we do, something Normandy and, and, and Brittany. I just want to have one of those with this. Whoa, cool. Do you know, Wales, we are so lucky. We really are, mate. We are so lucky. We should be spitting these out. Yeah. We just can't. can't well, we? I, yeah, no, I, I, I'm like that on the fence about spitting at the moment because yeah, you know, right. it's, it's topical, but I don't want to waste it. No. You know, I'm, no. I'm certainly not going to waste any of these. So we've, we've real got... Real gear changes, though. Yeah, we're in a real gear changer. We've got real finesse. Yeah. Real style. And then now we're going into... I love funky stuff. Well, they, yeah, they've balanced throughout those, and yeah. you can see the fruits coming through a little bit more. And, and that wine is so powerful. It's so balanced on the palate. Mm. You know, everything's coming together. Do you know, you yeah. can sit that with the dessert. Yeah. If you yeah. had, like, a, a you know a dark fruit compote fruit going with, like, I don't know, yeah or some sort of cheesecake even um but alone i think that's 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 the kind of style that i could quite happily sit with without food because it's almost a dessert to itself in a way yeah i mean the fruit is brilliant and that black currant leaf is just so no pressure now because we're now going out to great to conway our wines uh so before we do that tim we're talking about Green Clan Conway. What's the next question? Uh, the next question is, um, what's the price for this one, Carl? Well, uh, again, another bottle still. Rosé. Let's say rosé. Here we go. Um, what am I going to do? The, the your the one? Yeah, that one? Yeah, I'll, do that. No, I'll do this one. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what does Green Clan mean? Uh, what does Green Clan mean? Uh, the prize is one of Green Clan's wines. Um, the first person to answer. Will be announced. Absolutely. Are you ready? And while we're doing that, let's have a taste of, uh, of your gorgeous so wine. We plan put, so we could, we have this lovely name, Pebriog, which means sparkling in Welsh. And do you know what? You think you've got champagne, 
Carver Prosecco, and then we've got English sparkling wine. And, and as wonderful as English sparkling wine is, it's terrific. They're dying to find a name, like, and we've got one, Pepper Air Field. And yeah, it's a wonderful perfect. name. Yeah, it's great. It rolls off the tank. Yeah. So here we go. This is Solaris, same grape as in our still, very off the wall. Um, unlike everything else here, we don't lease age for a long time. We want all that fruit. That's classically what we do. And, um, uh, and so we want lots of abundance of fruit. Um, and we're really proud because this one, a couple of years ago, a medal in the inter uh, uh, a silver in the International Wine Challenge. Hats off to Absolutely. you and Charlotte, I have to say. Exceptional. It's a great salad for us. Yeah. Um, where it's placed now, because you know I'm coming into the first three, kind of blind in a way. I kind of know where this is. It's yeah. perfectly placed where we're it is. It We've now. got it right in exactly. the money, aren't we? Because it's it's a little bit more like you say, it's funky, it's youthful, it's approachable, yeah. it's softer. You know, it's not got lots of age and tempered. It is what it is, and I love it, and people love it, and it's a great varietal that I think has been has been sparkled beautifully. Yeah, and I, when I say sparkle, I don't mean it's been cheated. It's <laughs> traditional yeah. method. It is right? traditional method, yeah. <coughs> okay, again. Now, um, I'll tell you what, Charlotte. Have a chat with us. Tell us. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll work this from the one. Wow, Cole. Do you know what I really... When I first tried yeah. this... Um, I know we've, we've, we've known each other for a little while now and I'd really like to sort of, you know, add what my flavour thoughts are and what do you think? We've tried it on a lot of people. When you first brought out some of your new stuff when we come to the Rosés, it's just seeing what people's reactions like, you know, and getting buzzwords and comparing it to other things that they've had. A lot of people would say they've never had anything like this mm. um, and that it was approachable and you can see that just by the popularity of Yes All Right, we're geographically really close to you. Um, but the, the locals, just as much as tourism, um, come in asking for it. Yeah, it, it is. <coughs> I remember, uh, and it is a common. It was Os Clark and um, uh, Charles Metcalf, is it? Charles Metcalf, one of the uh, yeah. yeah. um, And all those guys, when they wrote the notes, orange peel, nectarine, um, lychee. And then you did your notes, and they're exactly the same as those really guys on the top of the money. Joe, yeah. White pear. Really, really nice soft apple notes to it. Easy to drink. We need to speak up a bit more. We'll, we'll, we'll bring it up a bit. We're going to um, talk louder. A <laughs> little bit more vivacious on the palate with the fruit, because it's very, very fruit forward. And a really nice petillance. The mousse is fantastic. The flavour, because of the intensity going through, the flavour lasts a lot longer. So in terms of the, the, the length, the assessment, you could have a richer food with it that's going to yeah. attack and continue with the yeah. length of, of the flavour of your... We, of uh, we were down on uh, for Welsh Wine Night a wow. few months ago, and we were down with Ellie Sparry at the Marangross, right. um, and Ellis was uh, preparing oysters. Um, we did it traditional, lemon, bit of shallot, uh, that's not shallot, that was shallots, <laughs> um, and then he went, do you want to do this the very best way? And I went, yeah, and he just said, just get this, tip it in the oyster, eat it. Wow. And I thought, what a mug. I've been doing this like <laughs> for years. Like that and then the And way. actually, and it just brought everything together. together. Yeah. It, it was stunning. I love this with Anglesey oysters. Yeah, that is going to be a favourite of mine, Hank Hill. But but um, we are so proud of this wine. We really you guys are. have done exceptionally well. You've done really, really well. The thing is, I'm not drinking that because I, I know what it's going to be like. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> And we've got a winner, have we? We do, Colin. Okay, go on. I can't see it through the glasses. Are you, are you, are you ready? We yeah. have another winner. It's the same person. And had that, you're going to have one heck of a party. And had me. Vendigadid and Gwynstan means? Vineyard. Simply vineyard. There you go. So some people say, sometimes people say Gwynstan Vineyard, which is Vineyard Vineyard. vineyard. You know. Um, and Harry, please let somebody have a chance on the next one, if you don't mind. <laughs> but uh, she's been a follower for ages, lovely oh, lady, lovely yeah, lady. Um, okay, so um, wow. we've got two wines left. Uh, let's give the toughest question out. Um, so come on, Anne Harry, if you win it, I'm not going to give you a wine, but see if you can be first anyway. <laughs> okay. So of the six 
commercial vineyards planted in North Wales because we've got an unbelievable amount of planting, but they're new. So you take a few years before you can actually produce wine. Of the six commercial vineyards planted in North Wales now, how many actually have produced Welsh wine up to now, as in 2019? So how many vineyards have actually produced Welsh wine of the six that we have in North Wales? So there we go. Before we go on to the other ones, Cole, yeah. a little bit of focus on, on yours because this is your feed. Yeah. A, couple, a couple of questions, if I may, on, yeah, on yours. Not so much about the product. Um, how's, this, how's this year been for you? It's absolutely superb um, because we have that really dry spring. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't get any frost because we've got sea all around the vineyard on, yeah. uh, it's on three sides within two miles, that tempers the air. So while the good weather could have given people frost, we never get that. Um, and then we have this settled time at flowering. And that's our, that's mm. our really dangerous time, yeah. flowering, because we suffer with a lot of wind. Yeah. And if we get a lot of wind and it's banging those uh, flowers around, they don't get fruits then, mm. or it's uneven. Well, it's phenomenal. And I've just tried to put a couple of posts out lately I mean, it's like the land of milk and honey, mate. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, we've never seen anything like it. Now, we probably will have to thin out, depending on how the, the summer goes. Um, but the fruit set's been great. The crop looks fantastic. And we're going to have, I think, the best year that we've actually ever had at Gwynton Conway. I'm dying for the 19s to come out, because in 19, we actually, uh, we did have problems. But then the lesser fruit gave us a very, very good crop. The 19 Solaris, 2019, I think it's the best we've ever had. Mm. I think it's a gold medal winner. I think it's so good. But, yeah. you know, we're sat low. We're not much above sea level. We have this wonderful farm effect microclimate, scientifically proven microclimate, that gives us this very mild winter. Mm. So our flowering starts off nearly before anybody, but we have the sea around us so we don't worry yeah. about the... the so, it's set up to be good. It's a beautiful little microclimate. It's lovely. Um, and we're opening another emotion thing. We're opening on the 7th to start our tour again. And that's a bread and butter of yeah. our business. Yeah. It's you guys all, and, and wonderful online sales that have kept us going over this yeah. very difficult time. Uh, and we've all felt it. We've all had to go this. So you've gone online. We've all been there, haven't we? We've all gone through it. And yeah. But look out! Look now, you've got another string to your bow. Yeah. You get. Last time we this place was open for people to come in and sit and drink. You didn't have an online shop at all. But you yeah. have now. We have. Yeah. And you're doing deliveries. Yeah. It's 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 been tiring. <laughs> it's been tiring. I've aged ten years and six months. Oh, uh, there we go. So and Hala's passing a name for a winner. The second choice. Are we yeah. ready? Right, and Hala. Ben to get big. Uh, the winner, ready? David Gard. With two uh, vineyards, which are obviously ourselves and our very good friends, uh, Richard and your Hughes at Panty at Penna Joyce. Love it. And I hope that maybe you uh, watched the video at the beginning of the first day of Welsh Wine Week because we kicked it off with a wonderful mussels two ways in the vineyard. I just, I could just smell a vision. Oh, it was stupid. <laughs> yeah. absolutely wonderful. I love panty cider. Sarah Stewart answered and I told her she wasn't allowed. Ah, so Sarah Stewart's answer, <laughs> that means <laughs> nothing to you. Sarah Stewart is our vineyard manager. <laughs> oh, come on, Sarah, you know. Got to give it a go. Yeah, you've got to give it a go, got yeah, go. got to go. And, and when, and when uh, Richard was down from panty on for Monday, Sarah was, Running the camera that day because yeah. Charlotte and I were cooking, yeah. you know. Brilliant. Good to Sarah, great to know you're watching. Uh, and uh, the vines need your girl, so you'll be back soon. And uh, it'd be great, it'd be great to start doing tours mm -hmm. again. So, should we move on? Let's move on. Okay, oh. so now we're going to Rose territory oh, I can't and we're going back to uh, the Y Valley, we're going back to Tintin, and we're going to have a wonderful. Pink, so we're doing two pinks now. Go on, Tim, go for it. Very different two styles of pinks here. I mean, I don't quite know what you can pick up um, that this close, but what's notable just on appearance, uh, Tinter's got a little bit more of a, I'd say a little bit more of a salmon pink with an orange tin, so it would denote that there's a little bit more age coming into play. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when we come on to Rossilio Pefliog, uh, your sparkling rose, which is Regent varietal, um, we, we know that you bring it in a bit earlier it's off leaves less so it's going to be a little bit more fruit forward so we can see that it's brighter um, 
Now, Tinta Parva is 100% Pinot Noir. I believe so, Judith. If you're watching, yeah, let us know. We, we think it is. They also do Regent, which is yeah. what our sparkling wine is. Yeah. I think it's Pinot Noir. It could be a blend, but I think Maybe it's Pinot Noir. Maybe a little bit there. Yeah. yeah. But straight away on appearance, I'm expecting something exciting. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's very it's very delicate. I mean, if I can sort of bring. Yeah. If I bring them up, may I? Yes. Don't look anything over on the way. Now, if you if you come into both of them, you'll see. That they're slightly, this is the Tinta Parva, and this is Gwynchland. You'll see the Gwynchland's a little bit more brighter. Um, and all that would denote to me is probably that the fruit's going to become a little bit more savoury yeah. with a bit of age, um, a bit more earthy. Here we go. Well, yeah, absolutely on the nose. Almost farmyardy. Yeah. But a great way that I put, you know, because someone might go farmyardy. Yeah. Uh, imagine a tractor driving through a strawberry field. Yeah. So you've had an earthiness, but we've got this wonderful fruit. The little hands of fruit in the background. Do the way sometimes. Sorry. So good. Well, there's cranberry. <laughs> this, listen, there's cranberry. I'm getting an acidity to it, and there's a minerality on the palate. Mm. There's a creaminess in this. There's an overall yeah. creaminess. Wow. That is your Wimbledon wine, isn't it? That's that right. is wild strawberries with a real smooth creaminess yeah, to it. Yeah, it's, it, the mouth feels fantastic. But I really like the, the development. You can kind of, it, it's got structure and depth and the fruits bouncing around between youth and a little bit of complexity and age. Mellow. It, this, there is. It's an ace. Fruit, a bit of savoury yeah, going on. It's great, it? it's great. That is great. I, and I tell you what, Welsh wines are never going to be bag and bucket prices. We, you know, we only make 400 bottles of Peveril, for example. Anger Hill are ageing theirs for five years at points. Yeah. You know, it's the, a the, hard the, the Clive Blue is a 2014, yeah. it's six years old. Exactly. So we're, we're, we're going from prices to early 20s to Anchor Hill can go up to 50 odd. Um, but what you've got is absolute passion in this tin. Absolute yeah. passion. And it comes through in these wines. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, we're so lucky to have them all together. Yeah. Um, and notably, you know, the hard work that goes into it. Um, let's, for example, now, you've had a pretty bumper harvest, or you're, you're looking like so, you're yeah. having yeah. one. So you, um, you do have uh, people come and help out. Yeah, um, be yeah. I mean, we just go on Facebook and uh, say, do you like, would you like to come and pick grapes? Well, one, you would, but then that's a little magic touch, free wine available. <laughs> you can do anything for wine, mate. Yeah. Anything for wine. Yeah. And, uh, do you know, if, if it comes into this year with social distancing, I think you could do that. Everybody's got a rope. Start at the bottom, get to the top, see how fast you can get there. Two metres apart, come the yeah. other way. At two point five metre levels. <laughs> what I'm no, getting at, it's really, it's really hard work, and you know, it's the team that makes it as well. You know, there's so many factors that come into the production, the cost of the bottle, the bottling. Yeah. You know, so much, and the same is there for champagne. Um, you know, I don't believe in cheap champagne, and you can really see the difference between great crews, good vintages, smaller producers. And the work that goes into it, we we're not cheapening the world at all. We're competing, and we're on par I, I, with champagne. This this range of wine is world class. Yeah, it's, this range of wine is absolute world class. It's focused me in trying them all in one hit to realise just how good we are. Yeah, and we are. But just focus on climate for a minute and climate change. You know, some of the, the South Downs and the South Coast of England. A lot of champagne producers, and even I know Kathy Jordan from South Africa, she's moved down into the south from South Africa and has planted Champenois grapes because they've gone in and they've, they've, they've put a lot of money into testing the soils and everything, but it is as good. Yeah. And it's starting to bleed up and get warmer. And do you know what? We are far north of, but to produce what you do in a cooler climate, right? It's a microclimate and we've got more elements to belt with. Um, it's, it, it's hard. You're out, I bet you're out every day looking. Yeah, you are. You know. um, on that point, I, I give everybody watching, there, there is uh, somebody who's shone for me in this week, and it's a lady called Linda Johnson Bell. Uh, you'd do well to look, because you, 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 you'd be so in tune. Um, Thewinelady.com, and Linda is so in touch with climate change and how it's affecting mm -hmm. wine. And, and she honestly believes, uh, and she knows, that Wales is going to become a great a great wine producing nation mm. because as climate changes things are getting really difficult in the classic areas that they can't they're going to have to diversify they're going to have to change mm. 
um, but she's done some tastings of our wines and been very, very informative and other wines from Wales as well. So, uh, the winelady.com, um, look her up, yeah, she's, cool. uh, she, she does a lot on cool climate and um, uh, very informative and it's really interesting to know where we may be going. Yeah, yeah. Last one. Right. Whole the finale. <laughs> Ding ding. 2018 Cross Leo Petriog Regent. Regent Grey. From so. your from your vineyard on Anglesey. Yeah. That um, love. And actually now that I have to say, don't worry about it, but that now has been taken over by a lovely couple, um, Gavin and Ellis Harry Jones. Um, they're gonna carry on the good work we did as we concentrate on the on the much um, as much more crop comes on uh, at Quinter and Conway. But we're going to buy the great soft and carry on this will yeah, be more yeah, yeah. you better so uh, <laughs> let's go right hey, mate yucky dad yucky it's dad. been a blast mate oh, listen it's a pleasure right let's it's do this pleasure. bad boy i'm jumping in straight on the nose are you ready oh, because my first my first note when i first had this was rose hip there's red pear and yeah. I, I i i just love it's very fruit forward compared to tintin but it lifts from the glass and it's a lot more fragrant with that fresh red fruit. Do you know when you taste this, um, there was a tasting at Belfry Vineyard, Andy's setting was fantastic, but uh, one or two of the tasters thought it was almost demi-sec. It isn't. This has only got about five grams of residual what? sugar per litre, but it's all that fruit in it. Cole, you enjoy it for a minute. You've had a really hard week. <laughs> <coughs> this, this is really well balanced and approachable and fruity and easy to drink. And region, it's quite an interesting grape. Sometimes I've had it still, and I, I, don't, I don't know if it ages brilliantly, but I find that I, when I've had it, I prefer it slightly fruitier in that it, style. It, it, and you've it's, harnessed It's that off the fruit. line to the Beaujolais of yeah, um, the Gamay's. The yeah, Gamay grape. it gives a style of red wine yeah. like that. You know, and, and Gamay can can get really earthy like Pinot, but it's really nice and easy to drink and super fruity. You know, when you to think you've got two years on that, it feels like it's just been bottled. Yeah, I agree. But the, the, the balance with the, the mouth feel, um, the, the presentation and the approach of it is great. It's super enjoyable. <clears throat> if you look at the label, um, it's got a lovely design. It's a beautiful painting done by uh, your namesake. Yeah, it's not me, it's, it's got my name Tim on Watson. it. Tim <laughs> Watson. Uh, he's a great artist, great local yeah. artist, and he did a, a shot from the bin looking over the Carnaft Eye, uh, Snowdonia range of mountains, and we transferred it to the bottle, and we love it, we love everything about it. Mate, it's been a blast. I, uh, I'm, I'm super looking forward to uh, having a little bit more of, uh, of the Orion, <laughs> if you don't mind, buddy. <laughs> Charlotte's just going to talk to me a minute, everybody. Phil Atherton is recommending grilled sardines on an Abbasock beach with Welsh rosé. Oh, oh, mate. I'm there. I'm there. Get in the car. Let's go. Do you know what? We're just, just going to have to speak to uh, the Bandy Bros yeah. and get them to sort that out. I know. That is, <laughs> mate, that's cool. That's really good. Okay, we're done. Um, this is it. Um, you can tell which one he loves. Um, I wouldn't, I I wouldn't name one I love. I mean, I've got to go for mine because it's our, ours and Charlotte's because it's ours. I, I, because of my fixation with seafood, yeah. I, lo I love that because yeah. I want that with seafood. But I'm so impressed with all the wines. Um, Some real gear changes. Yeah. I think they're we, all. We've had a bit of a roller coaster, haven't we? Yeah. And there's the, I, I can't give any bad comments against them. They're all great. They're all very structured. They're very different. The only reason I'm going back to that is that I would like food of all the others, but that one's just spot on on yeah. its so. own. I'm not getting any of this. No, no, you're not. <laughs> We're taking it with us. Uh, exceptional. Um, it's been a real pleasure, Cole, to be part of this. Mate, really, it really. Has been, I wish we'd shake your hand and I can't. That's how it goes. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for supporting Welsh Wine Week. This was all about getting perception up on Welsh wine. Uh, and when vineyards have been shut down, they can't do tours, they can't sell from the cellar door, we wanted desperately to be able to get everybody to understand that how good Welsh wine is. Yeah. So please, go out and buy it. Go to your local shops, go to your local retailers, come to the Great Glass, go to Vina Mondo, yeah. go to uh, Bonnet Welsh Foods, go to Huarden Estate, and sorry all the rest I've missed, mm -hmm. and when the restaurants open up, Go down to the Mount Brass and have this because it's the number one seller. Mm -hmm. All the other rest come. Hey Sam, guys, uh, it's the end of Welsh Home Week. I'm sort of really. It's quite I don't know what to do. It's I, yeah, I am. 
Yeah. You, you so, know, really, uh, it's time to say goodbye.